Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have x to the power 10 equals x minus 1 to the power 10. And we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex. I'll be presenting two methods, even though the second method will probably not be complete, but it'll give you a good idea. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I'm going to write this expression as a difference of two powers. In this case, that is going to be the tenth powers. And set it equal to zero. Now, at this point, we can think of this actually as, you know, a difference of two squares if we consider 5 times 2 equals 10. So we can kind of write this as x to the fifth power squared minus x minus 1 to the fifth power squared equals 0. Now this became difference of two squares and as you know there is a formula for difference of two squares which is super duper important by the way. a squared minus b squared can be factored as a minus b times a plus b. Awesome. Now using that rule we can go ahead and factor this expression as x to the fifth plus x minus 1 to the fifth. Those are going to be our a and b values. And that will be multiplied by x to the fifth minus x minus 1 to the fifth. And that is equal to 0. Nice. So we were able to break down our expression into two factors. And each of these factors can also be factored. And while we're factoring these, we're going to do something interesting. One of them is kind of easy. Uh, they're both easy. But uh, one of them is going to turn into something nice. Anyways, let's do it. So I'm going to start with the sum of two fifth powers. For this one, we have another formula that we use. So identities are important. So if you have a to the fifth plus b to the fifth, this can all always be factored. And one of the factors will be a plus b. In other words, a to the fifth plus b to the fifth is divisible by a plus b all the time. And the second factor is found by reducing the power of a uh, while uh, increasing the power of b. Kind of like the binomial theorem without the binomial coefficients. I think we talked about this before. So the first term of the second factor is going to be a to the fourth. And then we have to alternate because we have a plus sign here and we have a plus sign. So terms need to cancel out. So then we're going to uh, follow this by a cubed b and then plus a squared b squared minus a b cubed. Notice the symmetry plus b to the fourth power. Great, so by using that formula, we're going to be able to factor sum of two fifth powers. And difference of two fifth powers is pretty much the same thing. You just change the sign. This becomes a minus sign. This becomes a minus sign. And these signs are all going to be plus signs. Make sense? OK, let's go ahead and uh, do the sum first. So we're going to get x plus x minus 1. This is the a plus b part. That kind of gives you an idea about one of the solutions. And the second one is going to be like x to the fourth. Remember, our first term is x. And then minus x cubed multiplied by x minus 1 plus x squared multiplied by x minus 1 squared minus x times x minus 1 cubed. And finally, plus x minus 1 to the fourth power. That's going to be our second factor. Let's simplify this a little bit. And to keep a long story short, the first one is going to be 2x minus 1, and the second factor is going to be x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x plus 1. This is what uh, that simplifies to. So by setting this equal to 0, because our expression originally was equal to 0, by setting one of the factors, the first one, equal to 0, we get the obvious solution, x equals 1 half. And I'm pretty sure as soon as you saw this problem, you thought of 1 half, right? Okay, so that's one of the branches. Let's go ahead and take a look at the difference of 2 fifth powers, which is this one. x to the fifth cancels out, and everything inside the parentheses will be negated. So you're going to get 5x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 10x squared minus 5x plus 1. That's going to be the other one. And we're going to set this equal to 0 and obviously solve for x as well. This is what we get from here. But solving this equation is going to be a little different. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to break down this 10x squared 
into two pieces. So we're going to write it like 5x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 5x squared plus 5x squared minus 5x plus 1. I'll show you why I'm doing this. And then the first three terms, actually, we can factor out a 5x squared. And inside, we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. I hope that is familiar to you. Plus 5x times x minus 1 plus 1. Now, why did I put it in that form? For the very reason that this is x minus 1 squared and this is x minus 1. So we can use substitution. So let's work it out a little bit more. This can be written as x minus 1 squared. And now notice that x, minus, x times x minus 1 repeats itself with the quadratic term and so on and so forth. So we can basically write this as 5 times x times x minus 1 squared plus 5 times x times x minus 1. We don't need brackets, but I just wanted to emphasize the fact that we're going to replace that with something. And that is going to be, I don't know, t maybe. t is good. Okay, from here we get 5t squared plus 5t plus 1 equals 0. Now, this is a lot easier than solving this because look at this. This is cortic, and it's a special cortic. Uh, because we can transform it into something else. And now this is a quadratic. Obviously a lot easier, needless to say. From here, t values are going to be negative 5 plus minus the square root of 5 over 10. Now instead of trying to plug it into the original problem, like set this equal to x times x minus 1 and solve for x values, that's going to be a very radical move. Uh, we can do the following. We can basically write this as x squared minus x equals t because that's what it is and now put the t on the left hand side and just solve for x in terms of t and then eventually we're going to substitute right but from here we get x equals 1 plus minus the square root of 1 plus 4t divided by 2 awesome and if t is equal to negative 5 plus root 5 over 10 for example one of the roots then uh, we're just going to find out the uh, discriminant, let's go ahead and evaluate 1 plus 40, that is going to be negative 10 plus 4 root 5 over 10, if you plug it in, but that's going to be less than 0. For the other t value, you're also going to get a negative value for the discriminant, so that's going to be negative 10 minus 4 root 5, we're evaluating the discriminant in each case, this is also going to be negative. What that means is that your solutions are going to be non-real complex solutions. Let's go ahead and write those solutions now. So from here we're going to be getting x equals 1 half plus minus the square root of 25 minus 10 root 5 over 5 times i if I'm not mistaken. The other solution is going to be 1 half plus minus the radical is going to change here 25 plus 10 root 5 as opposed to 25 minus 10 root 5 divided by 5 and that multiplied by i. So that gives us four solutions and that makes sense because that was a cortic and it should have a maximum of four solutions. And there are four non-real complex solutions to that cortic, which we use the special substitution for. All right, great. And uh, so basically what happens with the other ones, because we had uh, two equations, right? We were basically looking at, let me go back and remind you what the other one was. Remember, we had two equations, the, okay, where is my good colors? Yay, and, uh, maybe this one. Okay, I'll go, I'll go with blue. So the other factor here, we haven't done this, right? We only found the x equals one half from here. And now let's go ahead and solve that cortic because we have two cortics, by the way. And the other cortic is x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Whatever you do to solve this problem, you're going to get 1 plus minus the square root of 5 minus 2 root 5 times i divided by 2. And the other solutions are going to be 1 plus minus the square root of 5 plus 2 root 5i divided by 2. Notice that the expressions inside the radical are changing and that we get another set of four solutions. So that is a total of eight solutions along with x equals one half. That gives us nine solutions. But we started off with x to the 10th power. Why are we getting 10 solutions? Something to think about. I'm going to leave that 
question open. Hopefully you can answer that. And let's briefly talk about second method. I told you I wasn't going to complete it because that's going to be too long, but let me just tell you what it is. So we have x to the 10th equals x minus 1 to the 10th. Now divide both sides by x minus 1 to the 10th and set it equal to 1. And then now you can write this as x over x minus 1 to the 10th power equals 1. And now we can go ahead and write this expression as Euler's formula allows us to write it as cosine of 2 pi plus 2n pi blah 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 or you can write it in a more compact form as e to the power 2 pi k because there are going to be multiples of 2 pi and then to find the tenth roots you're basically gonna divide this by 10, which means it's going to be e to the power um, pi over 5k, and you're just going to replace k with different values. And that's going to give you all the answers. And if you set this equal to z, then from here you can also solve for x, and you can say, hey, x is, can be written as z over z minus 1, where z is the tenth roots of 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow, but next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.